Hey everybody, so what we're here to do today is I'm going to form up what they call a rumble strip. So it's a continuation of this sidewalk here, kind of into the parking lot. But it's going to be where cars drive over it. So it's three feet wide by about 55 feet long. It's got kind of a curved area to it. And it's going to be just a little bit higher than the pavement when they're all done. You know, about two inches higher. So when the cars drive up over it, then it's got like a rumble strip on top for two feet. And then they drive back down over it. I guess just something to, I don't know, make the cars aware they're driving into a parking lot i guess so i gotta get the forms up and then i gotta set my forms pretty much to the width of those dots about three feet wide get a stake get it in place and that's what i'm here to do today and then tomorrow morning the plan is tomorrow morning to get this poured so let's get at it <laughs> So I got a set of plans I'm going by today. The city had this engineered out and then they had an architect draw it up just the way they wanted it. So they must have put a lot of thought into this. And here's what I'm doing right here. So the first arrow is a one inch bump up from the asphalt. The second one was a bevel. And then the third one is they want that rumble strip top. So they want the top kind of rough. And then over there on the right, that's kind of what it looks like from up above. Kind of a long, narrow, skinny thing that's going to be set in the road. So again, remember that it's pre-engineered. It's all been figured out by an architect. So, and we live in Maine and we get snow from, you know, December to March into April sometimes up here. So there's going to be plow trucks going over this thing. So keep that in mind too. As we get to the end of the video, I got a little bit of a surprise for you. But right now, I'm here today. I'm just by myself. Darren and Luke are on another job, uh, finishing up that job. So I'm over here getting this formed up so we can get it all poured tomorrow. There's a big rush rush on this to get it in for some reason. So I'm going to get it formed up. There's quite a bit of work actually in the forming. I would probably say that there's as much work in the forming and the prep work here as there is going to be in the pouring and trying to get this thing to look like that drawing on the print. I thought you guys might want to see this guy uh, compact in the asphalt, <laughs> running it over the soft asphalt, then back up over the hard stuff. So I'm not sure which one he was trying to compact there, but anyway, he got it done either way. <laughs> the ground here, the, the gravel here was really, really hard. These pins, I got metal pins. We use these things all the time. And they actually, they went in this, it was really hard to pound those things in here. And I had to pound in a lot of them. I'm using one, pretty much I'm using one by eight Azac. Some of the forms I have, I had before, um, they were pine. So they were like one by 10 pine boards. So they were pretty flexible. And then for the really flexible areas, I had to actually get one by eight Azac because I couldn't get one by tens for whatever reason they didn't have them. But the eights will work okay. And the, the good thing about the PVC boards is you can really bend them. They're flexible and they don't break. But I kind of had to do it in pieces. I couldn't, I couldn't... I couldn't screw the whole thing together at once and get it in there. I had to do it in, in, in a couple of big pieces. But you can see how flexible and flimsy that stuff is. But it makes for good bending material. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some three foot spreaders and I'm going to screw them inside the forms just to try to help keep it hold its shape a little bit as I go. And I'm, like I said earlier in the video, I'm using those purple dots on the ground. Somebody set those with uh, a satellite so <laughs> they have those exactly where they need them. And I'm going to get them as close as I can to them using using the three foot spreaders right there and just trying to keep them right on the dots as I go. For the most part, this worked pretty good, especially being by myself. Um, I'm using screws too, deck screws, so I can get them in and get them out afterwards. We're gonna curve, we're gonna round these ends off, at least this end here, I'm gonna round it off later on. I'll take that one by 10 piece out, that pine board out, and I'll put a, almost like a piece of flashing in there, 10 inch flashing, so I can have a nice rounded edge on that. 
and I'm using the 2x4 on the road as kind of a guide as to where to set top of form so I have kind of the same angle as the road into the parking lot over there to the right All right, so that's basically it. it's all it's all in shape. It's all set to set to grade the way it should be. So when they come back and repave, there's like a little tiny speed bump here almost. Uh, then we got a special uh, rumble strip bull float we got to use to give it a little pattern on the top. But I'm gonna just finish. I got a few more pins. I'll just finish putting my pins in. I'm gonna go get the wire mesh, have that here, and then we got concrete here in the morning. So. We'll see you in a few minutes. Now I'm cutting these. These are called, I call them slab bolsters. And I'm going to set them in on the ground before I put the wire on. So it'll hold the wire up off the bottom as we pour. And I had to cut them. They came in five foot length, so I'm cutting them in half. Cutting the wire in half too. The wire comes five foot wide by ten foot long. So I'm cutting that two and a half feet wide. And just setting it down in there carefully. Trying not to make sure it doesn't touch the edges. All right, here we go. Just getting started here. Let's see how this goes. We got 4,500 psi concrete. Get this curb poured here. That looks pretty good, don't it? Oh, that. Oh, I'll break it up. Nothing's going to miss them over there. Sometimes when they load the trucks too fast, trying to get them out of the plant, we'll get those those big lumps like that. Uh, sometimes you can break them up. You can just keep mixing and break them up. Sometimes you'll just get a little one here and there throughout the whole load. So let's hope we don't get those on the whole pour right here. And hopefully those were the only ones. He's got the slump up pretty good right now. I mean, as far as getting this poured and getting it screeded, this is really pretty easy. We can just go right off top of forms. And it's it's being only three foot wide, we can just dump out quite a bit before we screed it. So the pouring of this thing actually is pretty easy. And there's not a ton of slope to it, so it's pretty easy to get it to hold its shape. The trick will be later on down the road trying to shape it up. what Luke and I are doing as we're screeding is we're just kind of going out around all the metal pins. I couldn't get them all pounded down below grade because the gravel was too hard. So we're just kind of dodging the pins on each side as we go, moving the screed back and forth. What form seemed to be holding pretty good. Now we got to work that water out. Rain really high last night, so filled right up. Let's see how that works. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with cycles. They can be a lot of fun. Now when you saw that engineered print earlier in the video, was there anything that stuck out to you about the relationship of this and the height of this versus the pavement? And if there is, you know, let me know down in the comments because we're going to have down the road you're going to see there's going to be a problem with this and it's not going to end up being what they thought it was going to be. So let me know if you can pick out the flaw in the design of this because there's a major major flaw and I could I could pick up on it just as soon as I was told out of um, told and I, and I warned them about it but they didn't want to listen yeah 
yeah, getting right down to the end now. And we just got to do that little curved, that curved end on this thing. See how that goes. Did I get beveled down, do you know? I know, I understand. Yeah. Well, we'll let it set up a little bit, and then we'll taper it. How far down is your taper? I mean, they're going to bring asphalt well, in gonna here? it's going to end up being an inch higher than this. Oh, that's all right. Six, six inches back. On each I understand. Side. Yeah. All right. So we got a bevel. All right. So some idiot just came over and said, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but obviously, I guess anybody and everybody can walk by and question your work when they don't know a thing. And you know, we we run into that a lot. I guess that's okay. I guess that's okay. All right. So what we're going to try to do is we'll just mag float that out somewhat smooth. And then, and then we got like a, a rumble strip type bull float. We've got to try to run over this, see how it goes. We have, we've never used one of those. We've got to figure out how that's going to work in this scenario. But that's kind of what we're looking for. And we got to bevel these edges too. These edges all get beveled down a little bit to match the pavement. So we'll drive onto the pavement, up onto this rumble strip, back down onto the pavement. So that's that's kind of what we're shooting for. So we got... You got this rumble strip bull float here. It, it showed up broke. It's supposed to be four feet, but it showed up this way, which isn't necessarily a real bad thing because we only need two feet anyway. So we're going to try this. They want these rumble strip bumps in this this curb here. So if you've never used this before, we're going to see how it works. Not yet. We don't. Is it dry on top? All right, well, it's doing the rumble strip V's like we want. We're just, you know, we'll have to keep touching it up as it sets up, make it look a little better. But we can't wait. If we wait any longer, it's gonna to be too firm to get that in. It's going pretty good. The more we go over it, the more finished it's looking. We have to hit it one more time. Then we got to bevel all the edges down a couple inches. Keep it from being a speed bump that with sharp edges. What do you guys think of that special bull flow? That's cast iron. I ordered it and it came like that. Came broke, but it ended up working okay. 
All right, so overall that looks pretty good right now. I'm gonna hit it one more time, but you, as you can see, it's got that nice rumble strip in it all the way down. We got the surface closed up pretty good. Doesn't look too bad. So I'm just gonna hit it one more time and that should be it for that. And then the last thing we gotta do is on six inches out from each edge, we gotta taper it down two inches. And when we taper it down two inches, that's gonna leave us an inch above the asphalt. So they want about a one inch bump. They'll asphalt up to it. They'll end up with a one inch little bump, taper up those two inches, and then they'll hit the rumble strip, tape it down two inches. They got the one inch bump, and then they're gonna asphalt up to it. So I, not my design, I'll show you the plan. So we're just trying to follow the design, whoever designed it. <laughs> but I'm gonna run this over it one more time. You can see they're coming down a sidewalk here. There's the road. They turn into this road, and then, I don't know, I don't even know why they need this in here, honestly, but they're making, that guy over there is building a brand new Aroma Joe's, and they're making that guy, the owner of the Aroma Joe's, put this in, the, the, the town is. So, your guess is as good as mine, but we're just here to do the work, that's all. All right, the more I do that, the easier it's going, so I can... I don't have to stop and start quite so much if I can dodge all those braces in there. We had to use we had to use one by one by uh, PVC forms to get all this nice curve. Stuff's really expensive. A 16 foot, a one by eight 16 footer was about $95. <laughs> so I had to buy four of them. So it's $400 just in those forms. But we'll, you know we'll charge it all off to the job. But that stuff's expensive. Yeah, I mean, I think just a couple guys go along each side, scrape that down, make sure we're, we got our two inches. Yeah. You know, and then we just shape it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's no real good way to do it, but it's not getting enough now. I think so, yeah. It's not going to stand too bad. All right, we're going to start cutting down for a tapers on each end so we're just going to use our margin trials and thing and just cut it down we're going to be two inches below the top of the form yeah two, like a two inch thing yeah. yeah i'll do that i'll cut something so we can go by All right, now we got it all roughed in, cut down the way we want it. Now we're just gonna go back and put the finishing touches on it. As you can see, this was quite a little process, just doing these outside edges. Probably, it was more, probably more work than doing the beveled part with the bow float. And they wanted them to be six inches and two inches low. Um, so we had to taper it two inches and six inches. <laughs> and we had to wait for the concrete to firm up quite a bit in order for it to hold its shape. 
But as you can see on that plan, that, that little one inch bump that's sticking straight up is going to be a problem, I think. So let me know what you guys think. All right, so that's the finished product right there. Got our taper in. The bottom of that taper that we just did on the outside edge is going to be an inch higher than the asphalt when they get done repaving this. And then obviously they got the obviously they got the rumble strip part in there. So we'll be back. We're going to come back tomorrow and strip this, so we'll get a little bit better idea what it looks like. And then maybe I can get back here after they get it paved just to show you guys what the finished product's going to look like. But all in all, I thought that went pretty good first time using that bull float over there. Even though it broke, it broke just in the right spot. It made it pretty easy. So we'll see you. We'll see you when we come back and after this is paved, guys. All right, so it's noontime the day after the pour. We showed up to strip our forms off and everything was stripped off it was already repaved and opened back up to traffic so basically 24 hours they opened this thing back up they had all our forms piled over here in a big pile so I don't know I don't know. just that's the trouble with sometimes doing working on commercial stuff everybody's in such a hurry other subs you know they don't really care about your work uh, just that's why I hate commercial work I'll stay with residential but all in all Everything came out pretty good. You can see it's quite a little bump, but that's the way it was designed. They wanted an inch, an inch up from the pavement, and then you know two inches up with these rumble strip bumps. So quite a little bump for these people that backing out of this restaurant to go back up over, but not my design. But all in all, it came out pretty good for our first time using that rumble strip bull float. Everybody seems happy with it. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Hey guys, so we're back on our rumble strip job. The city, the city inspector didn't like the design of the first one, so they they made the guys we're working for rip it all out and they're going to make us do it again with a little bit different design. So, <clears throat> I'll go over that a little bit later in the video, but we're going to get this all formed up. They ripped this out this morning. I know, big waste. Big waste of money.